Hey, insight number three. We're going really far because we're just in verse 29 and we're going down to 33 and 34. It's, it's like a whole three verses later. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, this is still talking about your errand and how that gets accomplished better. And this is what it talks about in 33 and 34. It's more about what he requires from you to help you. Um, and we'll, that'll become clearer as we talk about it. So 33 and 34 say... Well, first of all, 32, because it's pretty cool too, says all things must come to pass in their time. And as frustrating as that can be for our human brains, it is true. Um, it's just our timelines are nowhere near like the Lord's. And I don't even know that he has a line for time. Like, what does his clock time look like? You know, what is that? What does that whole timekeeping thing of heaven look like? Because it's bizarre and I don't think our human brains get it. Um, certainly it is different than ours, than what we use. And even over the history of the world, time has been measured differently. So, right? I don't know. But all things must come to pass in their time. Time being the relative word. Because it depends on who you're talking to. But they will happen. All right, so let's move on. 33 and 34 says, Wherefore, be not weary in well-doing, for ye are laying the foundation of a great work. And out of small things proceedeth that which is great. Behold, the Lord requireth <coughs> excuse me, the heart and a willing mind, and the willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land of Zion in these last days. Now, we all know that out of small things proceedeth that which is great. I think any of us that go to church regularly and are covenant-keeping people absolutely know this, even if we don't recognize it every day all the time. But we do know it. Like, if we read this, we're like, yes, we know that. We know that from small things proceedeth great things. Absolutely. Um, we could probably list many, many, many examples in our own lives and the lives of others. However, 34, Lord requireth the heart and a willing mind. Why does the Lord require your heart and a willing mind? Um, because we often, if we're going to be committed to the Lord and say yes to something, then that's our heart. So why does it need to be accompanied with a willing mind? Hmm. Um so you can be fully committed in heart, yet still have your own will creep in. Like, you really want to do what the Lord wants to do, but you have your idea on how it's going to work. And your thoughts on what's going to be best. And that can creep in. Um, and especially as we were talking a couple of weeks ago, like, how do you know what to do? Do you know whether it's your decision or what the Lord wants you to do? And sometimes it doesn't matter to him, and other times he'll tell you exactly what to do. Um, and the times it doesn't matter to him, he's like, well, look, you've come to me with four options and actually any one of them is fine. And that can be so frustrating for us because we'd rather have the very black and white. So part of having that willing mind is that sometimes we will get our ideas knocked back. When we try to do something that we think and feel has been right and we give it a shot, it's not going to work. And we're going to be like, but you told us that what was good. And you're like, he's like, well, yeah, it was. It's just not now. We're going to do this instead. And if you don't have that willing mind, if you're rigid and fixed in that thought process, it's not going to look like what you thought it should be or what you thought it <coughs> um, was going to be the best. And it's that whole, oh, it should be this and it should be that. And you hear a lot of that, actually. Well, I do anyway. Um, I've probably actually heard a lot of that social media as well. Oh, it should be this. Um, I hear a lot about it and disappointment in people. Oh, it shouldn't be that way. It should be this way. Like, well, who said? Said who? Like, right? Think about that. Um, but a willing mind is needed because we cannot see the Lord's plan. We cannot see the bigger picture. He does. Um, our will is myopic. Quote President Nelson. Our will, myopic. It is short-sighted. It can only see literally what is in front of us. And we have this much understanding. Even if we're mega educated it doesn't make a difference to what the Lord sees, right? Um, the Lord is eternal with his viewpoint. A willing mind will allow our journey to be easier and better supported by heaven. If you're going to be willing to um, be molded, willing to try and fail, willing to keep trying, willing to... Um, have it be how the Lord wants it to look instead of saying, oh, it should be this way. Just go with what it is and be like, well, it should be. I'd like it to be that way, but it's not. And that's okay. Um, you know, like, I, 
some people are discussing how they've just announced that there'll be no evening session on a Saturday for conference. So that's like the woman's session or the priest's session um, and how that's going to look. And people are saying, well, it should be this and it should be that and conference should be this and conference should be that. And it's like, well, actually none of it really matters because we get what we get and we'll enjoy it. And yes, we can encourage this and we can encourage that and we can put forth our viewpoints. We're allowed to do that and we should question these things. It's not just a blanket here, this is what it is, you know, everybody shut up and get on with it. No, we are absolutely encouraged to talk about these things. But, huge but, <laughs> big but, okay, so, <laughs> terrible. Um off topic there uh yeah just that you know when these things come up we have to look at it at a bigger picture what is the bigger picture and you know people aren't going to get it right all the time and while we can say it should be this and it shouldn't be that who said it shouldn't be this and shouldn't be that that's our opinion so instead of saying should and shouldn't and blah 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 like that why don't you say oh i would like it if or oh, wouldn't it be awesome if, rather than, oh, it should be. Because you're telling yourself then that it's not meeting your expectations. And that's going to severely disappoint you. And that's what happened to these group of missionaries that went to um, Missouri. They were severely disappointed because it wasn't what they thought it should be. Rather, instead of going there and going, well, this is not what I imagined, um, but let's get to work. So it's just a willing mind. Hope that makes sense. All right. I say that a lot too, because I, I often don't know if my ramblings actually do make sense. It makes sense in my head. Anyway. Okay, Aldo Ugdorf. I'll finish with this. Aldo Ugdorf said, As you accept the responsibility to seek after truth with an open mind and a humble heart, you will become more tolerant of others, more open to listen, more prepared to understand, more inclined to build up instead of tearing down, and you'll be more willing to go where God wants you to go. That's awesome quote because don't we want to be more humble and more tolerant of others, more open to listening? You'll hear it better. You're prepared to understand. That's what happens if you've got a willing mind rather than a fixed, it should be this and oh, you shouldn't do that. It's like, well, yeah. There's better words to use and there's better ways to put it, to think of that. Um, you've given your heart over to whatever with the Lord, whatever he wants and asks of you, you've given your heart to it, do you have a willing mind that goes along with it? All right, that was that one. See you in a bit for the fourth one.